Okay, sorry. Yeah, now it's back. Yeah. Um, okay, may I continue? Uh, I'm very excited to say with you about the topic entering the Web3 work in iOS. So as you all are aware of, right, the Web3 technology is rapidly evolving every day. So at the iOS engine, what we can do to provide to our user the best iOS Web3 app. So in this presentation, let's together to discover how we can navigate to this new landscape. Let's dive into agenda today. First, I will share with you some of the concepts to help you to understand what is the Web3. And after we understand the Web3, let's together to create a simple Web3 wallet app by using Swift. And lastly, we can discuss more on the challenges when we're entering the Web3 in iOS. To understand the Web3, we need to look back to the history of web how the web technology involving in the decades. From web 1.0, provide to the user the static web only, and the operation is read on leave. We involve to the web 2.0, now the web is more dynamic and user will have more interaction. It's like our social media app we are using now today. And we become the web 3.0. The web 3.0 is different from the web 1 and web 2. Web 2 first is the decentralization. So what is the decentralization? If you remember, right, the couple of months ago, the banking service in Singapore have been down for a few hours. And then you go out, you cannot make any payments. So that is disaster, right? Yeah. So but it's not the problem in the Web 3 anymore, like Ethereum network, when we have more than 7,000 nodes running all around the world. Right. This is the server node. So how about the data? So for the database in Web3, it will be represented by the distributed ledger or the blockchain at the database. And it will be copied over all of the nodes running around the world. So you don't need to worry about one server is down or your database is down because it has backup for all of the nodes running. And is the blockchain will be used for store your transaction, your data. And whenever it's committed to the block, it will consider very hard to change. Is it immutable? We have the server node already. We have the database already. So how about the program running on the web tree? This is where the smart contract playing is role. So smart contract is the self executing program running on the blockchain. Will help us to automate the processes uh, for the agreement without the third party just right. Hope we have a uh, better understanding the Web3. But next, how we interact with the Web3. Um, okay, so it's about like for the Web2, how we interact with Web2 first. Uh, we may need to sign up or sign in to the platform, right? or even you need the KYC. And then they can use your information for monetizing without your permit. That, is, that you don't want, right? It's because of the privacy, privacy issue. We, in the Web3, it will be changed. What you identify on the network or platform is just the address pin generated by the private key. That's awesome, right? Then the challenge, the first challenge come with us, how you can manage your private key. So you may need to put your private key somewhere, right? That's where we call wallet. For the wallet, right now we have two types of wallet. First call custodial wallet. Custodial wallet is like you believe on someone then, okay, here is my wallet. Uh. Can you help me to keep it and maintain it? And whenever I want to make a transaction, and we say, hey, I want to transfer $5 to B. Can you give me back my wallet or rabbit key for me to make the transaction? Yeah. Most of the time, right, this third party can say yes. But someday, they may say no, right? Because your rabbit key and your rabbit, rabbit, yeah, your wallet is not really belong to you. You are not the have 100% control of the, your wallet. That's why the second concept of wallets will come called non-custodial wallets. Non-custodial wallet, you can think you have private key. You can write it down on the white paper and put on your pockets. And then you have full control of this. No one keep it for you and you are the one to keep your private key. But we are in industry for the already and no one do that. That's why we at the iOS, we can build, we can let user use our their iOS device and have the iOS Web3 wallet to help them to maintain their private key, their wallet. 
right? So Web3 Wallet, as you see right now, is very important, right? It's like the first entry point to the user to onboarding the Web3. Now, let's together to create the simple Web3 Wallet app. To create the Web3 Wallet app, first, we need to help user generate their private key. To generate the private key, we need to generate two things. First is the entropy. Entropy is the large random number. As you can see, it's very long and very hard to remember, right? That's why we need to encode it into a readable format that called mnemonic. Secondly, we can, gener we can use the right key from our first step and generate the addresses on the chain. This is your identity I mentioned before. And we have the address already. Then we want to see how much money or what the asset I have inside my wallet. That step called real wallet asset on the chains. Okay, let's go to the first step to generate an entropy and mnemonic. To generate the entropy, we need to random the pi. We will need to random 120 pick using the normal data random at the second line. And we will use this to generate the mnemonic. To generate the mnemonic, first we need to get the checksum by SAR 256 and get the first four bit of the the check the, the output. Then we combine the original entropy with the checksum, it will become 130 bit. After that, we will slip 130 bit into 12 work equally. So that means 11 bit is right. So for each 11 bit, we will map it into the dec decimal, uh, decimal as the index in the dictionary. So each of 11 bit, we map with one English word. And lastly, easily, we just concat all of the result into the memory works. For more information about the English dictionary, you can check it out more on the BIB 39. Okay, before we go into generate the address on the chain, we need we face another challenge. That is how you can move, manage your multiple addresses on the chain. Uh, for example, right now, right, I need to generate two address on my BTC chain, and then another two address on the Ethereum chain. So that means I may have four private keys to be managed, right? That is very hard for the user and not user friendly. But now, what we can do, we only need one private key only. And then use this private key to create the child private key. But to create the child private key, we need to follow a path, right? If everyone, every software, wallet software, follow the different way, so it will be not inconsistent, and then you cannot use one rabbit key for multiple software wallets. That's where the BIB44 come, come, come as the protocol to define the path that's all of the wallet software following. They say the first level of the derived path is the purpose. It can be 44, 49, or 84. The second layer is the coin type, like yellow for BTC chain, 60 for Ethereum chain. And the next level is the account, when you can create your sub-account easily. For more detail of the coin type, you can check it out more on this top link. Yeah, you can see that we only need one rabbit key only, and now we have four rabbit key to generate four different address on two different chain. That's awesome, right? Okay, let's see how we can do this. Right, we will take the mnemonic we generate from the last step, use this to re our my to our master key. Use this master key following the BIB44 derivation part to like the first layer is 44. Second layer, today I will generate my Ethereum address, so I will put the part is 60. Second, uh, third layer will be the account number, so I put zero at the my account index. The next two layer is the receiving and chain. I will not cover today. Yep. So we already have the rabbit key for this Ethereum chain. So we need to generate the address. To generate the address, first we need to generate the public key. And we put on the cryptographic function called KetCap256 and get the, get the first 20 bit of this. Last step is append the refit on. This is following the Ethereum standard to generate the address. So right, we already have the Ethereum address, right. Then last step, how we can check the user asset on the chain. So for the demo today, I will use the OK Links Explorer API. It's the open platform 
where you can easy to sign off. To use this, you can go inside the API management to get your API key, and then check out all the, the API that you need inside the document. In OKLink OK API, we provide a lot of API that you can use to see the user access on multiple chain, not only for Ethereum. Right? But for now, I will use it for check my, my balance in my Ethereum address. I will using the get balance at balance fields. Use this is just the normal ATB ABI call. Construct the UI string. The param is first is the chain sock name is the chain you want to get. Second is the address that you will take from the second step. And then we will put the asset key in our heater. Next, we will easily make the API call, decode the JSON response, and binding to the UI. Yep, that is the demo today. We already have Memonic, Ethereum address, and the access for this asset for this address. Yeah, is it my GitHub link? If you're curious more about how the Web3 wallet were built in Simple, yeah, can check it out. Yes, then we come with the last topic. What the challenges we are facing to enter the Web3 world in iOS? As you can see, we need to manage the user sensitive data. So we need to provide it to be secure, help users to secure the, their user wallet. By the iOS system providing, you can consider some of techniques like secure enclave, keychain store, or even you need to help user to connect with the hardware wallets. Then the second challenge is to onboard the user to the Web3. Web3 is still very new for all the user. So we need to enhance from iOS UI system, provide user-friendly feature and the cool inside to educate user about the Web3. Next challenge is the enable the seamless access to the Web3 platform. As you know, like in the Web3, it now is very rapidly involving. Every week or even every day, have a lot of app, the app application, have a lot of platform have been deployed. So at the iOS engineer, we need to provide to the user to easy to interact with the new platform deploying. Uh, you can imagine you provide the iOS app and there was the new platform, new DF, with just one click with wallet integration to help user to use this platform and DF. You can check it out more on our OK wallet app where we already built the core function for the Web3. First is the coin access management, help you to manage your assets on multiple chain. Second is trace when you can have one token and then you want to exchange to another token. For example, I have BTC, now I want to exchange to Ether, that's called trade or decentralized exchange. Thirdly is the NFT marketplace, where you can buy and sell or even we a the NFT on multiple protocol. And next is the earn. Earn is provide you the DeFi. DeFi, DeFi is the decentralized finance, help you to yield your token. It's like you have money, then you put on the bank, then the bank give you the interest. Yeah, it, and lastly is the Discover, where you can check out more on the D app or the Web3 platform app, easy to interact with your wallet inside OK app. Yep, so uh, I hope today I can bring some idea for you to build the best iOS Web3 app. Thank you for joining me today. If you have any other questions related to Web3 or even for OKS, please check out our OKS booth later. Thank you.